This research has followed on from my personal rehabilitation after a hemorrhagic brainstem stroke left me unable to walk and then 10 and a half hours of brainstem surgery took away the skills to even crawl. Using developmental movement principles, I rehabilitated myself, taking only 10 weeks to surpass the two to three years given in my prognosis. The intention of this research project was to establish if the same approach could be just as successful with subjects in the chronic stage of recovery. Participants in the research were all adult brainstem injury patients, ranging from one year and up to 12 years post stroke and surgery, all of whom had ceased to gain further progress in their movement skills. The developmental model of rolling, crawling, kneeling and squatting was to be used before walking skills were addressed. And each subject would start with the lowest level skill in the sequence for which there was a deficit. Subsequent movements would not be considered until competency existed in all dependencies and there was sufficient musculoskeletal range of motion to support the next aspirant movement skill. The research project was carried out over a three month period and produced the following results. 100% of the study group reported experiencing either some or significant improvement in crawling patterns. Over 50% of the study group reported experiencing either some or significant improvement in walking and standing patterns. And 100% of the study group experienced either some or significant improvement in overall movement quality. Given these results, the project can be considered successful and it can also be reasonably deduced that the use of the developmental model can be effective for patients in the chronic stage of recovery as well as those in the subacute. It should also be noted that those subjects who have continued rehab using this model have also continued to further improve their movement skills. Adhering to the following fundamental principles will allow a rehabilitation therapist to replicate the strategy and techniques that were used in this research. First ensure that posture and musculoskeletal range of motion is sufficient as you cannot cultivate a neurological skill in a range of movement that does not exist. You should seek to train in a proprioceptively rich environment. Where possible, the stimulus for the desired response should be experienced via a reason to move. To build a reflexive motor skill, the input to the subject should be experiential and should not come from cognitive instructions. The rehab drills used should only be those for which the subject has competency in the prior stages of the developmental sequence. Mandating walking as the first aspirant skill is analogous to wanting to construct a 10-story building and starting at the sixth floor. The level of adversity encountered in a rehab drill should ensure that the subject is challenged but successful. This defines the zone of proximal development and allows the subject to learn from their rehab rather than just attempting to survive it. In summary, the developmental sequence provides a systematic framework with which to structure movement rehabilitation and delivers objective metrics to describe and control quality and progress.